I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are gonna dye some tonal roving. We're gonna dye this roving by having a hot dye bath and we're gonna add dry roving in two different fiber contents to two separate pots. And we're gonna be adding the same amount of dye to each of these two pots just so that way we can also get a little comparison about how the different fiber types behave in the end. The roving we're going to use today will be Knit Picks Stroll Roving, which is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon, and Knit Picks Gloss Roving, which is 70% Merino Wool, 30% Silk. These are quite different from one another. Not only is one Superwash, but the other also has Silk, and so with the same amount of dye, this will look lighter. Now, one of the reasons why I'm planning on adding the fiber to our dye baths dry is that we can look and see how the different fiber types absorb water. And maybe we'll see some completely white patches in the end on this one because maybe the silk fiber isn't gonna soak up water quickly. But maybe we'll see a really uneven um, and a lot of tonal variation here on the stroll because as we add this in, the colors might strike to the fiber really quickly. Now, I know that stroll fingering weight yarn will absorb water really fast. I'm not sure about the unspun version. At the time I'm filming this, Knit Picks has released a new form of roving, Swish Roving, which is just 100% Superwash Merino, but that has not arrived yet. Uh, I ordered it as soon as I knew it was available, but it hasn't arrived. Uh, if you do wanna learn more about any of the roving or the other tools and equipment I'm using in this video, I will have links and affiliate links down in the video description. And I might make a commission if you make a purchase through one of my links. Now the only thing I'm gonna do to prep the fiber right now is to untie the ends. I think Knit Picks ties the ends so it's bundled carefully, but if you don't untie this, then you will get, ooh, this is, this one's like triple knotted. If you don't go ahead and untie it, uh, then you will get a resist mark there. I want to go for a blue today for our tonal yarn. And I do have some Caribbean blue dye stock already made and I have some midnight blue. I think I wanna mix these two together to get a blue that is less, not less, less bright, but less neon than the Caribbean blue. More blue, less cyan. Now, I definitely could mix this by adding just some pink directly, but the midnight blue, it does have a little bit of red to it. And so we're gonna go that direction. I'm going to shake up the dye stock. I always kind of try to keep a hand on the lid while I, doing, while I do that, so that way we don't have any surprises. Then using this little beaker, I'm gonna measure out 100 milliliters, I hope I don't regret this, of Caribbean blue. And I'm gonna do this twice. The reason why I said I hope I don't regret this is that Caribbean Blue can be a bleeder and I would really not like to deal with that today. But this is the decision I'm making and I'm going for it. I'm gonna shake this guy up. Uh, I will probably rinse out these little beakers for some kind of leave no dye behind. But I'm using this tiny little beaker and measuring out well, that was about 22 and a half milliliters. About halfway between the 20 and 25 mark, so I'm measuring out the same amount here. Since no other dye had touched that container, I could have put it back in our bottle, but I didn't want to. It looks like the color that we have here, looking at it, is more, it's a little bit closer to a primary blue, just looking at the edges but it might still have some brightness to it. So I'm really excited to see this color. But now let's go over to our dye bath. In this dye bath that I have boiling, uh, I have 16 cups of water. I'm gonna add four tablespoons of 5% white vinegar. We may need to add more later on. Now, if I were to add the acid later in the process, if I were to add the fiber to the dye bath first, uh, we would be able to get better color coverage. 
having the acid in there already will kind of help some of those colors strike a little faster. But we do have a lot of dye present. And honestly, I don't really know what will happen. Okay, I've just rinsed out our container. And now I'm gonna heat this back up and then we'll start adding our eroding. We can see a little movement on the surface. I'm gonna reduce this heat to low. And now I wanna add the fiber today, I think quickly, but also slowly. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in a moment. I am adding the fiber and pushing it in but I didn't add it in just all at once, all at once, because I didn't want it to be sort of a big glob. I was afraid that if I just added it all in, in almost a ball, that there would be area in the center that wouldn't get liquid very fast. And that's not what we see here. We saw that this, this is the stroll roving, by the way. We saw that this absorbed color, uh, oh, sorry, we saw that this absorbed the liquid super fast. So conceivably, I could have added this all in as a glob. Now, I do think we might have some color breaking in here. I do see some more blue and deeper areas, which just might be from this mixture of color that we have, but we'll have to see. So now I'm gonna wanna let this heat for, who? Let's do 15 minutes and then we'll see if we need to add more acid. And at this stage, I'm gonna let you know that I will be going back and forth real time in between the two different pots. But in editing, I'm gonna be showing things, um, just all the stroll together and we'll show the gloss in a moment. Hopefully that'll make things a little less confusing. But just in case I make references to the other <laughs> throughout the process, you know how this was filmed. It's been 15 minutes and we definitely still have blue in our water, plenty of blue in our water, uh, which I'm not worried about. It's just there, uh, but I do want to add more acid. Now the Caribbean blue may have been a risky color, same with going over a 1% depth of shade, but we will see. Okay, let's just add six more tablespoons of white vinegar. That should be plenty. Uh, I don't really wanna stir this, but ooh, look at that. See how pastel that is compared to the rest? Probably because it's more in the center. Even when we were layering things on, it probably had fiber on top and beneath it. Okay, I am gonna cover this only because I want to trap the heat in there and I don't want it to boil. But I'm now going to heat this for 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, we'll see. In general, I like there to be at least 30 minutes from the last time I added dye. Uh, but since I'm dyeing two things side by side, that's why it's a bit of a range. But 15, 20 minutes and we'll be back. Okay, it's been 15, 20 minutes or so. And I think things are mostly unchanged. You can't really see where I've pulled that. I really don't want to move this too much because it's hot. There, you can see we have a fair amount of blue left in the pot. Unfortunately, this is a reality for this color. So my choices are to add some other yarn in here to try to soak some of that up or to leave this in here to cool completely. And I'm hesitating. And the reason why I'm hesitating is because I don't want this to be a big bleeder. I can't just remove the fiber from the pot really easily. I mean, maybe I can. I don't know. I'm gonna turn off the heat and leave the fiber in here to cool. Uh, probably overnight, just because it's 16 cups of water, it's gonna take a while to cool off. And so then we can see if we've absorbed more of that color or not, or if I'm gonna have a lot of washing to do in a little bit. But now let's go dye our gloss. Here is our gloss dye bath, which I had to reset because it seemed like I had some brown staining in my pot. But I do have 16 cups of water here heating up. I'm gonna add four tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm coming in with the blue dye. In a circumstance like this, I like to measure out all of the dye all at once, as best as I can for multiple kettles. And the reason why I do that is so that way there is some amount of consistency, both in how I'm measuring, 
but also in how I've mixed up the containers before pouring it out. So that way, <laughs> I guess I know I have a similar amount of dye uh, for each of them. Now, we are seeing movement at the surface. I'm gonna let this heat a little bit longer. I just don't wanna lose any water volume in case I let it sit too long, but soon we'll be back to add our gloss. Okay, I'm gonna call this warm enough. I'm gonna reduce the heat. Ideally, we don't want bubbles because we want, uh, we don't want agitation in there. And I'm preparing a similar setup for the fiber. I've got two ends in my hand, the rest is sort of over my shoulder, so that way I can start to add it and try to push it in. And notice that it is sort of sitting here on the surface a little bit. It is not sinking in as fast. And you can see little pockets, little bubbles um, in here. Now, unlike yarn, if we end up with some white patches in here during spinning, those will have an opportunity to sort of blend out a little bit. Uh, but, as I try to add <laughs> the rest of this in, uh, yeah, so if there is like one tiny, like a white patch in there, it won't be necessarily super visible in the finished yarn. But I'm curious, because typically with this type of roving, I would pre-soak it maybe overnight. It has gone in pretty quickly. I do see a bubble there that I'm trying to dislodge a little bit, but all of the fiber is in here. It just took a little bit more pressing. It didn't really sink in on its own, but it also wasn't that much work. Now, I'm also seeing some breaking here. I'm seeing some brighter blue, some deeper colors. With this yarn, or with this fiber as well, if I had, added it in just one wad, pressing it in, I think that there would be areas towards the center here that would not have had as much liquid in there. And so I don't think we're gonna have any massive white patches. We might have a few or some that are more pastel, but I think because I added the fiber a little bit slowly, we have a chance for more even color coverage overall. Now. Will we have some kind of gradient because some fiber was in there longer than others? That I don't know. But given that in both of our examples, we added the ends in first, uh, we should be able to tell if things feel darker towards the end versus towards the middle. But one other thing to consider is that the ends and the middle have more experience exposure than sort of everything else potentially, because if the fiber is layered in the pot at all, that could affect the way the colors absorb. But anyway, I'm gonna let this chill for 15 minutes or so uh, before we decide to come and add more acid. It's been about 15 minutes and let's see, lots of color in there still. I'm curious, because at this stage I saw a bunch of lightness in our stroll, but I don't know what we'll see here. Let's add six tablespoons of white vinegar, and I'm gently moving it to just distribute it. I am, since this is non-super wash, expecting the colors to overall strike a little bit slower, but I'm gonna cover the pot, and we'll check in after 20 minutes or so. Okay, it has been 15 to 30 minutes, <laughs> somewhere in there. And I'm anticipating we're gonna see a lot of blue left in the water, gently bringing it over. There is blue left in there. Now granted, it is definitely lighter than it was before, but at this stage, I'm gonna turn off the heat and leave the fiber in here to cool off overnight. With the stroller ravine, I debated if I should add some kind of yarn mop to soak up some of the color or just leave it in and trust the process and hope that I didn't use too much Caribbean blue. And we're gonna go with that because we should have a nice saturated color. Yes, this will probably be lighter in the end than our stroll, but that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this comparison and this project on two different fiber types. But anyway, we'll check back in tomorrow. It is the next morning, and I think this is our silk. Ooh. So far, I'm not seeing any white patches. 
I'm gently squeezing out a lot of the water and I'm setting this aside and the great news is that the water has almost completely cleared. We just have to cross our fingers, we won't see bleeding. Okay, here is, yeah, this is the stroll. Uh, I did notice that after cooling for an hour or two that most of the, oh dear, most of the dye was in the fiber. And so we've talked about before how using warm water can cause acid dyes to bleed. And so that is something to consider. But also with some bright blues, I found that I'm less likely to have bleeding if I remove the fiber or yarn before it cools. So we'll see if I regret my decisions here. I was originally planning on washing the fiber together. I just added a hint of some dish soap, but the stroll roving can be a little bit uh, grippy in that it sometimes will stick to my hands um, because I guess it's, it's grippy to my hands because it's sort of slick and it's not that grippy to itself. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. And so I think I'm a little nervous that if I were to wash them together, then I would transfer some of this onto the other fiber. And that's not what I want. But the good news is that I'm not really seeing any bleeding here. Maybe a hair. But this is great. But you can see how some of that fiber is sort of even just sticking to our basin. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm trying to keep the fiber contents a little bit separate. That's all. But anyway, I'm going to refill the basin and we're going to let the fiber soak in here a little bit. Just a few minutes or so. I think that little bit of color that we saw initially was related to the residual color that we had in the pot. And there's a hint here. Um, still not that bad given what the fiber looked like before uh, we went ahead and like, turned off the heat. <laughs> what the side off looked like there. So I'm gonna fill this up with water one more time. All right, let's see where we are, but I think I'm gonna remove the fiber and take it to my spin dryer. The amount of blue is unchanged. This is a circumstance where I would recommend spinning the fiber and then rinsing it more. This is not that much color. This is a circumstance where we could keep washing. The color is super pale, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And it's a circumstance where I would recommend spinning the spinning the yarn and then washing it when you go to set the twist because then it'll be more protected. And I'm gonna reset for the silk fiber. We're gonna add a tiny bit of dish soap. Start to dissolve that. And bring over our silk fiber. What I mean by the fibers being more protective once it's in yarn form is that having that twist in there makes it harder for the fibers to get disordered. In this circumstance, yes, this is combed top, and so they're all sort of running the same direction, but it's very easy to snag them or disrupt it, or if you rub too much to sort of transfer it. Once there's twist, that brings some order to all of the fibers. But yeah, I'm seeing maybe even less color here. For this first rinse. Since this is mostly non superwash merino, the fibers stick to themselves a little bit better. Uh, and I find it's a little bit less, less of the fibers I find getting stuck to my hands, like we see with the superwash scroll roving. I'm curious if that will also happen with the superwash swish roving, the 100% superwash merino roving. Uh, because I haven't received that yet and I haven't tried that. I guess I really haven't dyed very much superwash fiber. But anyway, I'm gonna let this soak for a couple of minutes. Okay, making sure I'm actually recording. Okay, just like with the scroll, we have a hint of some blue, which again, because we have so much color in the yarn, and as I put water on, I'm not seeing tendrils of color leak out. 
I think that some of this color is because the fiber is a sponge and versus it being like not well set. So I'm feeling optimistic and I'm gonna fill up the basin. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, about the same or maybe a little better than the scroll. But anyway, this is also gonna go in the spin dryer. I'm gonna use them to counterbalance one another, spit out most of the liquid, and then hang up the fiber to dry so we can look at the finished tonal, very blue colorways. Here is the finished fiber, and we have a massive difference between the stroll roving on the left and the gloss on the right. We use the exact same amount of dye and conditions on both of these sets, but on the stroll, we have a lot more tonal, tonal variation, a lot more contrast, and on the gloss, there is still variation and contrast there. It's just way softer. These differences happen for two reasons. One, just the general fiber makeup of the roving is different. Uh, gloss on the right has is 70% merino wool, 30% silk. And the stroll is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And that second factor is not just the difference in the blends, but it's that we've got the superwash with the stroll over on the right. That's why we have so much contrast in there. It's the silk content of the gloss on the left that makes the overall color feel a lot more muted and a lot softer overall. Sometimes after dyeing, I like to go through and fluff the fiber. And with the exception of a few like disordered pieces like that, I don't feel any need to do that here. So I am gonna go right ahead and crochet up this fiber so that way we can have it in a pretty braid. Oh my gosh, this contrast. And the color combination between the Caribbean blue and the midnight blue is beautiful. I like this more than trying to make our dye a little bit bluer with deep magenta because then you could end up with some real purple patches and yes I see a little bit more reds in there but overall this is giving us a different brightness a much more blue feel overall than what we might get if we had added pink to make it more blue or even if we added navy I love this combination the gloss isn't matted um, maybe there's a little bit of some surface uh, felting going on, but actually that's very, very light. You can very easily fluff, and this means you'll also be able to easily draft the fiber. We just have a little bit of some twist in here. And so you can tell like how easy, how much effort it takes to move apart the fibers can help tell you about the disorder. Yeah, we have some twist in here for whatever reason, and so that made the fiber feel a little bit more compressed than I think it actually is. I am very grateful that the washing of this did not seem to destroy it. That is something that I'm always nervous about because I am nervous about dyeing fiber in general. Now, we do have brighter blue and deeper blue patches in here. It's just the total contrast that we have is a lot less. There's a lot less contrast. The color here is a lot more even uh, because it took longer for overall these colors to strike. So we're seeing a lot more of the combined of it. Now, this is not the cleanest silk fiber I've ever dyed. And by cleanest, I mean, there is a little bit of sort of disorder at the surface that I could see, but still, mostly, if we zoom in, you can see these fibers are all still running in the same direction. Uh, so I think that this is still perfectly spinnable. Ooh, this is a very fluffy braid I have right here. It's really hard to believe that these are the same colorway. <laughs> because visually they aren't. Visually they feel very, very different. This one feels much more variegated. I would probably call it blue variegated. This I might call a blue tonal because it is a lot more tone on tone. 
Now, I'm curious about what would happen if I did the same kind of setup without blending different dyes, because clearly here we had those dyes break and that gave us this dramatic difference. If we had dyes that didn't break, maybe we would see some tonal variation, but the, the colors themselves could feel a little more similar. Ultimately, this is a super dramatic example of how the same dyes on different fiber contents and not just superwash versus non-superwash but also no silk and with silk uh, how those differences can result in the colors feeling very different on your yarn and so if you want to achieve this on the silk blend you're going to need to go about it in a different way and likely do some hand painting and use a lot more dye than you think you would need because something about this also just feels like there's a lot less red, a lot more yellow in it, and things feel less saturated overall. There's a lot of things you could say in there. I am Rebecca from Cheminitz, and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. I love doing side-by-sides of the same colors on different fiber types, and this has to be one of the more extreme examples I've had. Maybe I also should do this again, but use a non-superwash wool silk blend next to a non-superwash just wool blend. That would be a better comparison than you're really only changing one variable versus having multiple variables that are different. But either way, this does give us a dramatic showing of how the fiber content can really change the colorway, the result you get based on the technique you're doing. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Thank you so much for watching!